and gentlemen, who's ready for some comedy? Everybody's ready. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, my name's Ramon Rivas. I'll, I'll, I'll just be Bill Squire uh, on the flyer, though, because uh, Bill forgot he had a vacation plan. Uh, so he, he went he went to a whole other state, and it's like, bro, you were supposed to be in Coventry. Uh, so I'm here. I went down the street to Coco Bakery. Uh, nice. It's very de very delicious. Uh, I'm just gonna keep. I'm not gonna try till you're done. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> Just because it's very distracting to have a whole other person next to you while you're trying to do your best. Um, so my name's Ramon Rivas. Uh, I've been doing comedy for 15 years. Uh, about a year in, I started treating it like a full-time, non-paying job. Uh, and that was a mistake. Uh, probably should have been like, you should attach a little bit of pay to it. Uh, it would be dope. Um, I, uh, I got used to being broke, though. You know, I'm not like now I make enough money like I put my on my own like record label So I put my own stuff out like I'm Master P. Uh, I have like, bootleg CDs uh, if, if, Does anyone have a CD player? Okay, I'm gonna pass that but I was gonna throw it but that seems dangerous uh, I remember CDs used to cut you if you hit them right um, That's my new album. I bought a drum machine in the beginning of the year uh, off of Facebook Marketplace from a dude. I was like, why are you selling this? He was like, oh, I got my girl pregnant. I'm like, damn, you need a couple weeks of diapers. Here you go. Uh, and I got it. I started fucking with it. So I taught myself how to like produce music. So that's got like my jokes with music under it. <laughs> Which I think makes it a song. I was just trying to make something cool to smoke weed to. Uh, so... You can listen to it on streaming if you want. It's called Bits Over Beats. Um, the CD's got like 30 some tracks. The online has 10. Because uh, I was like, I should break this up a little bit. Put it all out at once. So you can listen to it on there. If you listen to it 20,000 times, that's like giving me three bucks uh, for the CD. So whatever you want to. Um, we can make happen. But I get poverty line, poverty line income without having to work, which is pretty cool. I'm like, we should give this to everybody. Um, it would probably save a lot. Um, I passed a road sign on the way here that said it had the national debt and had a big ass number. And I'm like, damn, all that debt and I can't go to the doctor. Uh, <laughs> this is weird, but it's cool. I try to sign up for Medicaid, and they're like, send us confirmation of how much money you don't make. Uh, and <laughs> I've had to do that like four times. They're like, do it again, though. And I'm like, God damn it. I just want to see if there's something in my ear. You ever have a weird rustling in your ear? Feels like water, but you're like, I don't... I've been doing this for like days. Uh, it's just in there. <laughs> Trying to think of what else I want to get out of the way before I start trying to. Uh, I do a show on the west side at a place called Dunlaps. It's a, I do it every Sunday. Um, one show's called Sundays with a Z because I like to smoke weed. Uh, and the other show's called Con Tu, which is Spanish for with you, but it's conjugated improperly because I didn't know that uh, when I made the show. Uh, but Kantu is a variety show hosted by a comedian and a musician friend of mine. They're both comics and they have a poet, a musician, and a comedian every show. And then Sundays is just me sitting at a little desk while people do comedy uh, and I'm just on the internet. Uh, at the same time. All right, I think that's it. Uh, I hung out with my family on Christmas, as I'm sure most of y'all did. Um, we went to my family's first, and I saw my dad, and he's an interesting dude. Uh, he's, he just turned 60, uh, but he still just considers women pieces of ass, uh, which is a weird thing for a grandpa to think. Um, just most grandpas are like, save your money, build your credit. My dad's like, that bitch got good top. Uh, <laughs> Oh my. 
<laughs> My dad's one of 17 children, uh, which is a preposterous amount of people to come out of one person. Uh, that's full court five on five basketball with subs and coaches. Uh, it's an incredible amount of people. And like all the recent news has made me look at my family history through a different lens because they overturned Roe versus Wade, which is crazy because people hate pulling out. Uh, so it's like y'all probably could just let that alone. Um, but it was a big conservative movement like since the moment Roe versus Wade got codified, they're like, we about to flip this shit, which makes me feel like conservative pussy must be very dry, uh, which would explain why they're all so mad. Um, <laughs> Willing to be proven wrong, uh, but <laughs> but they overturned it, so they took away a woman's choices, a woman's options, a woman's agency. So it's looked at, made me look at my grandma as a case of like forced birth, like no choices. She had all them kids before that was the legal option. You know, there's 30 years between the oldest and the youngest kid. That's a whole historical generation. Imagine giving birth through a whole chapter of a history book. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandma grew up poor in Puerto Rico, which is like, you're an American citizen, you're just not allowed to vote because your collective opinions might fuck shit up. Uh, <laughs> like, you still get birth certificate, but... I don't know, it feels like a, a Puerto Rico is like an occupied U.S. territory, which is basically you just America's side bitch. Uh, like... <laughs> You're like, when are you gonna put a ring on it? Like, bitch, just. Uh... <laughs> it's okay. Here's some paper towels. Uh... But you're still allowed to join the military, which is why you're allowed to be a citizen in the first place. So, so thank you. <laughs> so, not a lot of economic options growing up on the island. And the Puerto Ricans are very Catholic, which like Catholics don't even believe in contraception. Like that's across all every Catholic culture. They just don't. They just do the old pray and spray. Like. <laughs> so not a lot of religious options. And then my grandma just fell in love with a shitty dude. You fall in love with the wrong person, you can fuck up generations of people. You know, to give you a clue how shitty my grandpa was, he didn't marry my grandma till the last kid. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> 30 years. There's people in this room who are like, we've been fucking a few months. What are we? <laughs> my grandma didn't have that option. And now, you know, I feel like you're back far enough in any of your family trees. You got alcoholism, you got abuse. I feel like my grandpa was the last inflection point of that. And you tell people that, like, she should have just left. It's like, bitch, you couldn't even have a bank account back then as a woman unless a man said it was okay. Not even your husband, just any man had to go to the bank tell her, hey man, she's cool. <laughs> and then my grandpa would just go to Puerto Rico for chunks of the year and just leave my grandma with all them kids. She don't speak no English. She have a good education, so she's just got really good at bingo to keep everybody alive. <laughs> you ever wonder why old women are nasty as fuck at bingo? It's because that was the only economic outlet uh, back then. <laughs> Nowadays, you can have OnlyFans. Back then, you had only Stanford. <laughs> Get bad. <laughs> then a little dig, did a little dig, and I found out my grandma was 13 when she had the first kid, which is like, Grandma, you little hoe. Uh, then I found out my grandpa was like 18, 19. He's like, Oh, you creepy as fuck. Like, that's, that's like a, some conservative type of shit, like some child bride type of shit. So it's like, Okay. That's a, you know, looking at the impact of that, that denying one woman choices and options. She had 17 kids, they had kids, grandkids, now we're around like 100, 150 people. That's a little economy. That's a lot of taxpayers, a bunch of veterans, a couple of prisoners, which America's like, ooh, free labor? Mm hmm. That's a big impact for just denying one woman choices. And I wonder if you gave my grandma a choice, what she would have done. If you went to her, someone came to you like, hey, do you want to start having kids right now for the next 30 years? She might have been like, I think I might just want to go to sixth grade. Uh, <laughs> get this last year of recess under my belt. Uh, 
better. Next year, we got to memorize a locker combination. That sounds mad complicated. Uh, but just as complicated as a child. So that was like my family foundation. So like my family not broke. We just like at the top of the lower class. Like middle class and stability be so close, but just out of reach. That shit would be nice though. I just adapted. I just don't worry about money. I'm not gonna worry about something I don't have. That's a waste of energy. Uh, and then I didn't really understand credit because I, I always felt like if I don't have credit, I can't fuck it up. <laughs> and then I started working at Sears when I was like 17. They were like, you should get a Sears card. I was like, that's a good idea. Uh, and I immediately fucked up my credit. Uh, they were like, 90 days, same as cash. I was like, oh, cool, anything I buy in the next 90 days is paid for, and that is not what that means. Um, I was just, that shit added up. They were like, you owe us six grand. I was like, I bought just a mini disc player, bro. Like, that's crazy. So I, w I was living in LA and my credit score was like four or something. Which is like, ugh, all right? Like I did a co I did a corporate gig for like people who sell houses, and I said that, and they were like, ew. <laughs> I was like, y'all pro probably would rip up my paperwork as soon as I left. They're like, we honestly probably wouldn't let you fill it out. Uh, <laughs> like, all right. So I came back, moved back to Cleveland. I was like, I'm gonna fix my credit. So I went to the bank. I was like, hey, can I get a credit card? And they looked. They're like, a little one. I was like, how little? They were like, $80. Is your credit limit? I was like, okay. And then I like paid my cell phone bill and buy like a Happy Meal and then I'm broke. Like cat tapped out. And I was like, hey, can we raise this? They were like, nah. Uh, you honestly shouldn't be using it as much as you are. Uh, I was like, what do you mean? They're like, the more you use it, but if it's high and close to the balance, it looks bad. So you want to be around like 30%. I'm like, man, I wish they would have taught me this instead of two-step roll dodgeball. Uh, when I was in school, I know I still know how to play steal the bank and don't know anything about compound interest. Uh, but cool, so I managed. I got my credit. My credit score now is like seven fifty eight hundred range. And I was like, thank you, thank you. Hypothetically, your boy got money. Uh, realistically, I don't know. Uh, but. But then like they raised my credit limit like slowly over time. So now it's to the point where like I can spend more. Now I can like have a balance. You know, I used to just pay that bitch off. Now I'm like, oh shit, I, no, I, I, don't, I can't pay all that right now. And like it makes me wish like I bank at Huntington. So it makes me wish that like bear pelts still had value. Cause I live on like a very idyllic street where there'd be like deers and rabbits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I just, hey, I'm gonna be a little late on my payment, but like, what do you give me for these? <laughs> like, we're gonna give you a closed account. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I've been in a relationship for a while. We're at the point, the last few years, we've gone to each other's families for the holidays, and I've learned that her mom's mad annoying. Uh, like, like to a crazy level to like, I texted my sister when I got there this year, I was like, her mom is still talking. Uh, and then like an hour and a half later when we were leaving, I'm like, she's still talking. Uh, it is a lot. When I first went over there, she, she was like, I'm just so happy that you and my daughter found each other and she has someone to love her and be, be with her. I'm like, yeah, I'm very happy too. It's nice to have someone to be soft around and love and be comfortable with. And I went outside and I came back in. She followed me. She was like, I'm just so happy that my daughter has you. I was like, hey, what's wrong with her? Uh, <laughs> you talking like I took like a lemon. Like you ever sell someone something that you're like, that shit broke. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you need a car that bad, I'll get you from A to B. All right, I feel like I'm about done. Right. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, damn, that's all. I haven't done that in so long. Um, I was actually, I was at Joanne Fabrics this morning. Um, cause I was, I'm doing a video.
that bricks. <laughs> Where homeschool kids go on their field trips. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and Fabrics, why not make a scarf since you can't make a baby? Uh. <laughs> Joe and Fabrics, make sure your daughter stays a virgin by making her prom dress yourself. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple more I can't. But I remember I, the first time I tried to do the, that song in front of an all-black audience, nobody laughed. <laughs> I didn't know why until after the show, this nice old black man came up to me and he was like, "Hey man, black people don't do crafting." <laughs> I was like, "That's way too racist to be true." Uh, so it took me a while, but I came up with a couple. Uh, the first one is Joanne Fabrics, in case you need some beads for your braids. <laughs> and then the only other one I could think of was Joanne Fabrics. <clears throat> if you want to make a t-shirt when your little cousin dies. Uh, <laughs> Which destroyed uh, and brought it all back on. Uh, with the exception of one table of women got very upset. Uh, to the point one of them stood up and was like, Oh yeah? You think that's funny, huh? Well, how about when you die after tonight's show, we all go put your name on a t-shirt. Sounds like everyone's about to go to Joe and Fabric. All right, guys, you ready for your next comment?